Hey folks, Ron here. I'm noticing I'm not getting as great a shot of the house as I'd like, so I'm going to keep going here. Now, this is the former home. This is the last home that Jean Harlow lived in. The famous actress, blonde bombshell, platinum blonde of the 1930s. This is the last home she lived in. She was renting this home, actually, when she did the film Saratoga and actually was here when she finally, when she got sick for the final time and died. Uh, Jean Harlow was a very interesting case. Let's see how much of the house we can get here. I think I'm going to walk and talk while I do this. Well, Jean Harlow... Sorry, house. Jean Harlow... I'm sorry because there's a lot of traffic. And... Including gardeners. Okay, here it is a little bit. So Jean Harlow was actually moved to Los Angeles with her mother. She befriended, and her name was Harleen, by the way. Her mother befriended, or she befriended a girl who was an aspiring actress. This particular young woman did not have a car, so one day she asked Harleen, later to become Jean Harlow, to drive her, and this has happened before, drive her to the studio or for the audition. So while she was waiting, while Harleen was waiting for her friend to come out of the audition, studio executives noticed Jean Harlow and said, boy, you're beautiful. Have you ever thought about acting? And wanted her to go to casting, and she refused. Well, later, her they kept persisting, kept persisting, and her mother was very interested in that when she heard about it. She certainly wanted her Harleen to be a star, or at least an actress. And her friend wagered her better. I bet you won't do it. I bet you won't go over to Central Casting. Well, Harleen would never back away from a bet, and she ended up doing it. Let's go back again. And she went over to Central Casting, and the rest was pretty much history. She started as an extra, but was quickly put into films. And she had many relationships with very famous men, um, including, you know, the most famous, but not only was Paul Byrne. Paul Byrne was big Hollywood mogul, and he wanted to buy out Gene Harlow's contract. And actually did buy out Gene Harlow's contract, finally from Louis B. Mayer from MGM, I believe when she was just 21 years old. And I believe it was for $10,000, which was a hell of a lot of money in those days. Well, he was in love with Paul, with, with, um, with Gene Harlow, and quite a bit older than her. And eventually they did marry, but they were only married for two months. And in two months in the marriage, he was found dead. And actually, what's interesting about, also what's interesting about that is the house that Paul Byrne died in that he shared with Gene Harlow up on Easton Drive off Benedict Canyon is the same house that Jay Sebring was living when he was killed by the Manson family in July of 1960, in August of 1969. And they say the house is haunted now. And you'll see a little bit of that house in Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, the film, and in other documentaries, of course. Anyway, so... Jean Harlow was renting this house at the time of her death. Oh, I was saying, when Paul Byrne died, uh, there was, you know, the speculation was that it was a suicide. Uh, it was made to look certainly like a suicide, like leaving a note, because apparently he couldn't sexually perform, another so-called miss for Jean. But apparently, and Jean kept quiet about it, and her career soared, even though she was considered a suspect at first. There was indication it was a murder early on, but Hollywood royalty kind of swept it under the rug. Now, in 2009, a documentary or book came out saying that the home or that the murder of Paul Byrne, the death of Paul Byrne, was in fact a murder, uh, and that he was killed by a former lover, and um, that happened more than once apparently in Hollywood. Uh, even to William Desmond Taylor, so unless it was the former lover's mother, which is possible too, and I'm going to do a blog on that one. But anyway, Jean Harlow was then here in this home, uh, or at least renting this home. At age 26, she went on to do a film called Saratoga. Now, a year previous, Jean had been sick with, I'm just going to look at my time here, Jean had been sick with severe sunburn and influenza you know nothing you'd really put together but apparently they were symptoms early symptoms of kidney disease now when she was filming saratoga she was sick and ironically she was playing in one scene she was playing uh, 
the character she was playing was supposed to have a fever, a temperature, and be sick. And when they were rolling, she was so ill, she literally had to lean against Clark Gable. Her co-star and said, get me to my dressing room. She did. They brought her home here to this house. Her mother was with her, and apparently she got sicker and sicker. Gable, Clark Gable went to visit her. And he kissed her and said that he could smell urine on her breath, which is apparently uh, a sign of end-stage kidney failure. Um, and she had, uh, you know, kidney disease. She had there's some rumors about exactly, and I won't go into all the details about her illness. She did have scarlet fever as a child. She was quite young to die, especially of kidney failure or peritonitis, but she did. And she left a lasting legacy. We don't know what it would have become her career. Uh, the ironic thing is, well, among other ironic thing is, things, is that she was, you know, the first real blonde bombshell certainly of the talky era in Hollywood. And what I'm going to show you now is that almost 15 years later, the biggest bombshell, blonde bombshell, probably in Hollywood history, moved in two doors down with her then husband, and I just did a vlog of it, to this house, uh, Marilyn Monroe. Marilyn Monroe lived at this house <coughs> with Joe DiMaggio the nine months, or at least part of the nine months of their marriage. Okay, folks, so that's it for today. This Porsche is going by me, and he's loud. I'm going to wait by, wait till he goes. So that's it for today. I appreciate you watching and listening. My name is Ron. Uh, if you enjoy my channel, please leave comments in the comment section. Please give me likes. And please, if you comment in the comment section, if you see fit, I will certainly answer. Okay, folks, good seeing you. Good talking to you. On to the next location. Uh, see you. Bye-bye.